Welcome to another episode of Wisdom on the Front Porch. And today I have someone really special with me today. Colby is here in his basement, but it's an amazing looking basement. I really do love your background that you've got there. So Colby, tell us just a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, and why you do it. But we'll talk into that later. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm honored to be on LS. And um, so yeah, I'm Colby Wexter. I am a 35-year-old uh, let's see how do how do I put this into short terms? I help six figure agency owners uh, trying to get to seven figures. The problem with these six figure agency owners is they're they're working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, right? So they don't really have any freedom. Uh, their agency runs them instead of them running it. So I help them reverse that trend and uh, increase their earnings while they do it to have more autonomy, which is the name of my business, autonomy agency with the hope of you know getting them to the point of where they can say yes to whatever they want and no to whatever they want uh, working together. So that is that is the long and short. Well, that's definitely the short of it. Yeah, I love that because you help them own their time instead of trying to manage it because they need to own it to get to where they're going. How did you get started in this? Yeah, so I... Um... I've been very like transparent with with anyone who asks is I kind of backed into helping this group like kicking and screaming in a positive way in that I up until recently had had my own agency uh, for eight years and got it to a very successful spot. But the reason I'm helping solve kind of the burnout problem and overworking and that sort of stuff is because I personally did that. Right. So uh, about seven years into the agency or six years into the agency, I burnt out really, really badly twice mm -hmm. in the same year. And in response to those, I had to make drastic changes and they just happened to be changes that had really good effect. And uh, I got my 70 hour works, work weeks down to eight. Uh, we wow. doubled it. We doubled in revenue within a year. And so these were things where I, I was just like anyone who I coach is you know, at the beginning, you think, oh, it's not possible, or at least it's not possible for me. Um, yeah. My hope is that they can see not only is it possible, but it's possible without burning out first. I, I already burned out for them. So I would like them to not burn out uh, and be able to actually see that come to light and uh, to have a better life, right? To have that autonomy that regardless of how much you want to earn, just the ability to say yes to whatever you want and no to whatever you want is to me the most clear freedom there is, honestly. Yeah. So, so if you were burnt out, what made you keep going? <laughs> well, you know, there, there's, there's just the logical side of, I had a young family and, wow. um, you know, I, where my generation being 35 years old is the first generation that's worse off than their parents. Right. So we have student okay. loan debt and we, you know, you own a home and those sorts of things. Okay. It's all good debt. I'm not irresponsible. Uh, with my finances by any means, but <clears throat> I would love that. I personally am like teaching autonomy for your agency. I don't have personal autonomy in that I still owe things because I have the house and, you know, and these sorts of things. Um, so when it comes down to it, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I kept going um, one out of logic and two because it was also one of those things where i was hard-headed enough where it's it was mine right like it wasn't only mine i was a partner um but when you see something go from zero dollars to several million dollars you want it to be you want it to start feeling better too yes. and so i think there was an element of me that was because i've never been primarily motivated by i mean i'm not at all motivated by status and money is is definitely a motivator, but it's not the top of the list. And so to me, it was like, I want to create something substantial. And I've I've nice. put in, you know, six years of my life, seven years of my life into to doing it. Um so yeah, it's it's no one's ever actually asked me that question. Uh, why did you keep going? Um, so you can kind of hear me yeah. try and navigate the answer as I'm saying it, but it's yeah. Well, that, and that's part of wisdom on the front porch is is yes, it's about entrepreneurs, it's about our culture and our lifestyle, but I really want to bring value to the entrepreneurs. So as they're going through it, it's like, oh, this is such a struggle. Why am I still doing it? Why do I keep going? And I think by hearing it from others that have gone through that and listening to things that they do kind of gives them the 
the meat and potatoes or the strength, whatever it is that they need so they can keep going too to see that, yeah, don't quit. Don't quit. There's, you know, there's been times I wanted to just quit. It's like, this is hard. I've never done this before. I don't know what I'm doing. And and you just get all those things going through your head. And, and it's okay to take a pause. You know, one time I took everything off the walls, excuse me, took down all my vision boards, everything like that. Yeah. I just started bawling. My husband comes, I was out, out in the shed and my husband comes out and he goes, what is wrong? I said, I'm such a failure. Nothing is working out. I should have been here. These other people that were there. Like, and he said to me, the most smartest thing, he goes, you are just barely getting started. And and it was true. I mean, I still had a lot of learning to do. I still had a lot of learning to do. And it was just like, okay, so I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to take a break and see what's not working and what is working. What do I need to adjust? And I realized that I had been chasing so many things from what other people were saying, oh, you need to do this and you need to do that and all of this, that I actually lost sight of why I wanted to be here in the first place. What was bringing me joy? What did I want to bring a value to others? Once I got back to that, then it was like, boom, I'm ready to go again. And you just, it's like you just get propelled to another level. You get propelled further down the road from where you're going. So I totally understand that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and we need to, you know, my, my friend Jose Escobar says a wave lifts all ships, you know, they came from something that actually, um, President Kennedy said too, you know, he actually got it from somewhere else. But but it's true. You know, we want to lift everybody up. It's not like we just do one thing and and navigate around everybody. It's and I've been learning that the more you help others, the more you get them to where they want to go, you just automatically get to where you want to go. Which I love that part of it because I love helping others get to where they need to go. So speaking of that, as you're helping others, what are some some things that people can do um, when they've gotten into that spot that they see they're starting to get burned out? What are maybe some warning signs they should watch out for? And then what would be some tactics that they could do to not go there? Yeah, I, I, that is, you really kind of hit the nail there is that the reason you burn out is because the signs are very obvious. Like they will, they will throw themselves at you over and constantly and constantly, and you will ignore them. And that's how you burn out. Yeah. Uh, that is not only my experience, uh, that is everyone's experience with burnout. Yeah. Right. So the thing with that is, you know, acknowledgement is great. Action plans are better. And because you're so stuck in the weeds, I just kind of like to have this visual of when you're burning out, you are just surrounded by the forest or weeds growing over top of you, whatever. You have no idea how to acquire a machete or a lawnmower or whatever to cut those down. Somebody yeah. else does, right? And so I'm not saying jump at the first person who offers to help you because many times offers out of compassion are, while well-intentioned, are not the best you yeah. need someone who actually can help you. Like, I mean, it. like can has been in your position or is where you want to go, who can get you there. It yeah. took me ages and ages and ages to realize that I didn't really invest in mentorship until two years ago. Uh, I can tell anyone listening that I spent 11 years of my life being really annoyed and angry and, and wondering why I wasn't, you know, I was always a high performer but I was like, where is where is the joy? Where is my momentum? Where is all this stuff? That's That was a victim mentality. I didn't look outward enough. And the moment yeah. I did and entrusted not only my time and trust, but my dollars into people who were further ahead, uh, amazingly, I started performing in a way in which I felt enriched by it, right? Nice. And so what I would say is if you think you're burning out, you already have. If you're concerned you're about to burn out, you will. So it's not, if you can identify that, the next logical step to me is start, or my advice to you would be to start looking outward. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's 
therapy, whether it's medication, um, you know, I'm certainly not advocating as a medical professional. I'm just saying, do what's right for you, whether it's life coaching, whether it's a business coach, whatever, right. the, the last thing you should do is continue on with what you're doing. That's, that would be my, my anti advice is, is keep going with how it's going. I would not recommend it. Right. Yeah. So. No, in fact, I was just reading in the, the secrets of the millionaire mind, how He's talking about, um, oh boy, I hope I get this right. So I'm going to use my own example. So you've planted tomatoes and you bring a basket that's made to hold eggs and you put the tomato in there and, and you take it to the house and you wonder why the tomatoes haven't turned into eggs. And so you go do it again. Put the tomatoes in the basket, take them to the house. Why aren't these eggs? And it's like, you're doing the same thing, but you're not looking at what you're doing. You're not listening to what the signs are. It's like, these are tomatoes. They're never going to be eggs. And that's really a poor example of what he was saying. But it's like you're doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, and you're not doing anything different. So mm. it's like, these are tomatoes. Oh, well, when I take them in, I can make tomato sauce out of them, you know. And, and if I want eggs, then I need to go to the chicken coop, not the garden. So, so it's kind of like, make sure you're, you're, you're not repeating the same thing over and over again, expecting something different, but not taking any action to make sure that something different is going to happen. Yeah. And when you're stuck in that cycle of everything's falling apart and it's all on me and that sort of stuff, that's usually a really good indication of it shouldn't be all on me. Yeah. Right? Like. Yeah. I, I have no one to blame for my burnouts but me. Yeah. I said yes to everything. I thought I needed to be the one to solve it. It's not, it's an empty well. Even if you do solve it, it's going to be so hollow because you're going to be so exhausted. There, there's, yeah. there's nothing there. Um, so there's this mentality of, of peaks and valleys. I've been using this a lot lately. It's funny how these things just like keep reoccurring, you know, in the same week, but. Everyone's trying to get to the peak, but if you really think about it logically, the peak is the air is thin up there, nothing grows. And, you know, if you're by yourself, you die. Like if you stay there, right? And so it's really the valleys where things are a bit tougher or not as comfortable. Um, you know, I've been asked numerous times in my career, how are you even where you are? And I say, well, I'm nowhere where I want to be. But if you're wondering like how I got here, it's by being uncomfortable all the time. Like I'm just uncomfortable constantly. Um yeah. Because Les Brown whole... talks about that. He goes, yeah. get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's when you're growing. That's when you're making the changes. Yeah. My, one of my favorite quotes is just growth is one foot outside of your comfort zone. Right. So it's, yeah. it's really important. Um, but the, with the whole peaks and valleys is like the valley perceived as the bad thing is where all the life is. That's where the people live. That's where the farmers are farming land. That's where you're growing and, and consuming things. It's like, yeah. Those difficult moments uh, are why I wouldn't trade my burnouts for anything. Like I learned so much about myself to be better equipped for those future things. One of which being paying attention to the signs, because I, I think you, you manage burnout. I don't know if you ever recover from it and beat it, right? So, I still have plenty of traits I did then. The difference is, is I catch the signs and then act accordingly. Right. If I'm yeah, feeling exactly. a little bit run yeah. down, I slow down. Right. If if I I have to put it on my list to play video games, which is my generation's way of relaxing, right? But I do that it's too. On, yeah, but it's on my list because yeah. I am a doer. I am a high performer. And so many people I talk to are. But like <laughs> all of that work without rest is yeah. unsustainable. Yeah. And, and, and the good and thing too, when you take those breaks, when you get totally away from everything is all of a sudden something will come to you or you yeah. get back and you realize, no, I'm recharged because I could leave it behind and go do something else just to refresh, relax, re yeah. restore myself. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that that is the often underestimated the the rest you get actually can reveal especially in the business world plenty of next moves yeah. and, and what you should do next and 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big advocate for it. That's awesome. I know our time is really short. I just, I appreciate you being here and, and getting to know you. We'll definitely have to have you back. So tell, tell people where they can find you and get a hold of you. Yeah. So um, if you are an agency owner, I would encourage you to check out autonomyagency.com. Uh, specifically if you're, if you're working more hours and earning less than you want, uh, that would be a good resource for you. I also just post on LinkedIn every single day and I'm very transparent about my story and the people I help and, you know, beliefs and all that. So, uh, as far as I know, there's no other Colby Wechters on earth. So it's just Colby and then uh, W E G T E R. If you search that on LinkedIn, you will find me. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Colby, for being here. And thank you, my audience, for being here and hearing this great information from Colby. And we'll see you next time on Wisdom on the Front Porch. Thank you for joining us today on Wisdom on the Front Porch with your host, Ellis Kirkpatrick. You can find us on our website, wisdomonthefrontporch.com, see previous episodes of the podcast, and view issues of the magazine. Did you know you can submit questions, leave reviews, or suggest topics? You can also tell us where your favorite front porch location is and what it means to you. We hope you gain value and insight from today's or previous talks. We appreciate your support for us so we can continue to provide value and expertise to you and others. Subscribe to Wisdom on the Front Porch magazine and receive a second year absolutely free. This is a limited time offer available exclusively to those who mention the name of today's podcast. Join in next week when we bring you another great insight into the world of entrepreneur culture and lifestyle. Make today a great day. Always believe that something wonderful is going to happen.